Sea levels are rising worldwide. It might not look like this right now because we're come here at low tide, but measurements from satellites show that the sea level is going up about three centimeter each decade. And the reasons for those rising seas are very clear. It's because the 20th century is experiencing a period of strong global warming and that leads to the expansion of the ocean waters. Warmer water simply takes up more space and also it leads to melting of continental ice, the mountain glaciers, the ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica. They are all losing ice and that water ends up in the ocean pushing up the sea levels. We know that sea level has risen about 15 to 20 centimeters since the late 19th century and the sea level in the millennia before has been quite stable. That can be reconstructed by taking drill cores from sediments in the salt marshes along the world's coastlines and uh, that clearly shows that sea levels have been stable for thousands of years and that's quite consistent with the fact that climate has been relatively stable before the modern global warming set in at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century. If we look back further in Earth history, there are times of very large sea level changes. Everyone, for example, will be familiar with the fact that there have been big ice ages on the Earth. The last major ice age reached its maximum about 20,000 years before present. And at that time, the global sea level was 120 meters lower than today. That is a huge difference. And it came from the fact that uh, there was a lot of ice. That's why they're called ice ages. And these huge ice sheets on land took away so much water that was missing from the oceans and that's why the sea level was 120 meters lower. And it took about 10,000 uh, years at the end of the last ice age for sea level to come up to modern levels rising by those 120 meters. And about two thirds of the ice that we had at the last glacial maximum was lost in this process at the end of the ice age. On the other hand, that means that we have one third of the ice still left and that's still enough for a bit more than 60 meters of global sea level rise. And that, of course, if that were all to melt that ice, then we would lose a lot of or most of the major coastal cities and uh, island nations. So, in fact, we can only afford to lose a small percentage of the continental ice that we have on Earth today. And going into further major global warming by two, three, four degrees is bound to lose quite a large uh, fraction of the continental ice. In fact, unabated global warming, if we just keep going as if there was no global warming problem, could mean the complete ice loss from the northern hemisphere with uh, at least seven meters of global sea level rise resulting from this. Now the good thing, the, the one positive news here is that sea level change is a quite a slow process. The ice sheets take a very long time to melt. The ocean takes a long time to heat up and that's why for the next 100 years by the year 2100 sea level rise will be in a sense moderate compared to those much larger changes that we have seen in Earth history. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reported in its most recent report in 2013 a, an estimate of up to one meter of sea level rise by the end of the century and we can limit that to about half that amount if we stop global warming by ramping down our emissions of greenhouse gases in the coming decades. Now, if we manage to limit global warming below 2 degrees or hopefully closer to 1.5 degrees, as was agreed in the Paris Climate Agreement at the end of 2015, then sea level rise will still be a problem, especially in the long run, because it doesn't mean that we can stop the sea levels from rising. The best we can now achieve by limiting global warming 
to below two degrees is that we can prevent a further speeding up of sea level rise. So the, the projections with climate models and ice sheet models show that if we stop global warming at two degrees, then sea level will keep rising steadily at a pace is quite similar to what we've seen in the last couple of decades, maybe a little bit higher. But if we do not stop global warming, if we let the planet, uh, the temperature rise to three or four degrees by the end of the century, then sea level rise will accelerate quite a lot. That's also very basic physics. The warmer it gets, the faster ice melts, and that is why warmer temperatures lead to a faster sea level rise. And that relationship is actually borne out by observations in the past, by the connection of sea level and global temperature that we find in the last uh, centuries and millennia. So the bottom line is we are causing global warming. This global warming causes sea levels to rise. That is an observational fact. And this rise will be with us for a very long time. We have to think of this as causing changes that will go on for thousands of years now. And if we don't stop global warming pretty soon, that sea level rise will accelerate. It will become faster and faster, drowning coastal cities and uh, low-lying island nations and threatening areas, countries with uh, rather large populations living close by the sea, for example, in Bangladesh.